Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, minimize the maximum difference of pairs. We're given a zero indexed array, which is pretty meaningless in this problem. We're just given an array of numbers and we're given an integer P. We want to find P pairs of indices of numbers such that the maximum difference amongst the pairs, and when they say pairs, they actually mean the numbers, not the indices. I think it's kind of worded a bit confusingly, but among those pairs of elements, and let me actually draw it out. So these are our elements and we want to break them up into P pairs. There's a bit of a restriction. We're not allowed to repeat the same index. That basically means that we're not allowed to repeat the same element. So suppose that we break them up into these types of pairs, just for simplicity, they're adjacent to each other. Now, among all of these pairs, we wanna find the difference for each of them and when we say difference, we mean the absolute difference. So for this, it would be 10 minus one. That's gonna give us nine. This is gonna be two minus seven, which would give us negative five. But like I said, we want the absolute difference. So we take negative, we take positive five here. And then here we say one minus three, and that's gonna be an absolute value of two. So these are all of the differences. Now, we kind of understand what they're asking us. Among all of them, we choose the maximum difference. So it's gonna be nine. This is the value that we're trying to minimize. So we constructed our pairs like this, but there are other ways to construct the pairs. And I'll show you the way that they do so in the solution because the solution is actually one. We are going to use this as the return value. This is the return value and we want to minimize it and then return it. So nine is not the solution. The solution is one. How do we break these up into that way such that we get that one difference? And there's actually one last part to the problem. We don't necessarily need each element. We can only use each value at most a single time. So that's the restriction. Now, how many pairs do we need? Well, if you're paying attention, you realize that we can't possibly have more than n divided by two pairs. Let's say n is the number of elements that were given in the entire array. We can't possibly have more than this many pairs. The number of pairs is actually specified in a separate variable called p. So this is how many pairs we need. And like I said, this value is never going to be greater than n divided by two. If you scroll at the bottom of the problem description, it will state the exact same thing. But like I said, just intuitively based on the description, this is implied. And in a real interview, it would be worth mentioning that to your interviewer because then they'll probably realize you actually understand what they're asking. The good thing here is we only need to find two pairs of elements. Now, if we want to minimize the absolute difference, don't you think it would be helpful to sort the array? Because let, let me just show it to you. If I want to, for any particular element, whether it's this guy, this guy, this guy, or this guy, why would I ever choose a non-neighbor element if I want to minimize the difference? For three, if I want to minimize the difference, I'm either going to take the difference between two or seven. I would never do that with any of these or these because that's never going to lead to a smaller difference. I think this is pretty intuitive, isn't it? The difference as we go farther to the left is only going to get bigger from three. And if we go farther to the right, it's only going to get bigger as well. So this is the hint that there's an element of this problem that is greedy. In my opinion, the easier solution to arrive at is the greedy dynamic programming one where you start at the beginning of the array after you have sorted it, of course. So we definitely want to sort the array. But once you've done that, you're going to start at the beginning and you're going to kind of build a subsequence of P pairs. So for every uh, value, you kind of have a choice. We can either choose the one or we can skip the one. And then here we can choose the one, uh, the second one, or we can skip it. And then here we can choose the two or we can skip it, et cetera, et cetera. And then here uh, we can make those decisions basically. And what you're going to realize is that this solution will lead to a time complexity of big O of N times P. It's not a bad solution at all, but it just happens to not get accepted on leak code. At least in my case, it led to a memory issue. I think I got memory limit exceeded. 
because with caching, we're going to need all of this in memory as well. And by the way, since our P is sort of bounded by N, this can kind of be comparable to an N squared solution. So these are more or less equivalent because that's like the upper bound of P, or at the very least, this is bounded by N squared. But the interesting thing is that there actually is a better solution. Now, in a real interview, I would honestly think that this would be good enough, like the dynamic programming solution isn't easy either. But there is a better solution that is also greedy and involves binary search, believe it or not. It's not super intuitive, at least in my opinion, because the DP solution is just so much more obvious. But let's get into it. You wouldn't know to arrive at the binary search solution unless you take a look at the constraints, which in a real interview, they usually don't like mention this to you. Another reason why this solution is not intuitive, but the noteworthy constraint here is the value. Each value in the array is going to be between zero to 10 to the power of nine. Now, that constraint is much bigger than the length of the array, which again, we found the DP solution was n squared, where n is going to be the length of the array. So this is another reason why the binary search solution is not intuitive, but I'm going to show you why it actually is more optimal. We are going to use this, this range. I don't know what to call it. Let's call it M, where this is like 10 to the power of nine, let's say. We're going to use this as a variable, this is gonna be our binary search range. Before I get into that, let me explain the intuition. Suppose our return value, which again is the minimum difference among all of the pairs, suppose we guess, our guess is that that value happens to be zero. How can we confirm whether our guess is true or not? Well, we would have to look at the array and ask ourselves, can we find p pairs such that the difference, the maximum difference is less than or equal to zero? How do we do that? Well, it's pretty easy after you've sorted the array, isn't it? That's the greedy part here. We start at the beginning and we just do a very basic linear scan. I look at the first element and like I said, I'm not going to compare it to the last element or the other one, I'm gonna compare it to its neighbor over here. And I'm gonna ask, is the difference between these less than or equal to zero? It is in this case. So we found one pair, we're being greedy here. We can't reuse the same element, so we're gonna take our I pointer, not shift it by one, but shift it by two. So over here, our I pointer is at two. Now we're gonna look at its neighbor, two minus three. The absolute difference is one. That's definitely not less than or equal to zero. So we can't include two in any of the pairs. We now increment our I pointer by one because we kind of eliminated this guy. So now we're gonna compare three with its neighbor seven. And the difference is gonna be four. That's definitely not less than or equal to zero. And then lastly, we're gonna see that seven compared with 10, the difference is three, definitely not less than or equal to zero. So we were trying to find two pairs such that the difference, the maximum difference for those pairs was gonna be less than or equal to zero. We were not able to do that. So our guess was incorrect. The answer is not equal to zero. That's not the case here. So a naive way to do this would be basically be greedy. We try zero, next try one, next try two, next try three, all the way up until 10 to the power of nine. And the time complexity of that would not be great. It would be n times m, where again, m is bigger than n. Our previous DP solution was n squared, but there is an optimization we can make, and that is going to be, of course, binary search, like I mentioned, because we have a very clear search range for the return value. The return value is going to be somewhere between zero all the way up until 10 to the power of nine. We want to find the smallest value such that we're able to make P pairs with the maximum difference being whatever value we have selected. So instead of going from zero, one, two, three, we're gonna run binary search on this range. So we're first gonna take the middle value, which I think would be something like, uh, well, I'm not even gonna guess what it is. Now, what's the time complexity of this approach? Because 10 to the power of nine, that's quite a big number. But if we run binary search, we know we're gonna take the log of that term. So we're taking log of M 
is that really going to be more efficient? Like, let's take a look. Is n log m, and the way the n term comes from is because we are going to have to linearly scan through this and compare that to our, our dynamic programming solution, which was n squared. Is this really more efficient? m is such a bigger number than the upper bound of n. Well, think about it this way. If you had something like a, a value like a million, and you took the square root of that, you would get a thousand. That's pretty good. Like square root will take a big number and make it small very quickly. Now, you might not know this. I'm pretty decent at math, so I kind of remember this, but log is even more than square root. Log is square root on steroids. It will take a big number and turn it small very, very quickly. Another way to put it would be that log, which is blue over here, and square root, which is red, log grows so much more slowly than square root. And if you need a quick refresher, you can check out my big O notation lesson. It's available on Neatcode.io. I'm just mentioning it because it's relevant here. But my point is, if you took a big number like 10 to the power of 9 and took the square root, it would be much smaller than 10 to the power of 5. So if you take the log of this number, which is basically what we're doing here, it's going to be way smaller than n squared. Log m is going to be way smaller than n in this case with these numbers that we're working with. Now, theoretically, this number could be so big that that's not the case, but generally it is going to be the case. Now, enough math. Let's get into the solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is sort our numbers array because that's the like whole crux of the problem. And then we're going to set up our binary search. Our range is going to be from zero all the way up until 10 to the power of nine. And you can do that in Python like this. And I'm also going to initialize the result. We're trying to minimize it, so I'm going to set it to the max possible value, which is this. And then we're going to start running the binary search, and it's pretty standard binary search stuff. We're going to take the middle point of our range, as we usually do. I'm going to do it like this to prevent any overflow. If you don't understand this line, it's not actually necessary. Well, let me fix it. This is pretty much equivalent to left plus right and then dividing that by two. So you can write it like this if you want to. This is just a way of writing the same thing without having it ever overflow. If you don't understand it, feel free to comment below and I'll try to explain it. But next, we want to know if this is a valid middle value like is the maximum difference of the pairs that we can construct less than or equal to this threshold so that's what we're going to pass into our helper function is valid that i'm going to declare up above over here i'm not going to implement it quite yet but i'm going to show you how we're going to use it so if the range is valid then we possibly found a result so we're going to set the middle value to our current result which is ultimately what we're going to return out here we're trying to minimize the maximum difference now if the range is not valid then we're going to do something else but if we do find a valid maximum difference then we want to try to find an even smaller one next so what we do is set right equal to left or mid minus one we're going to try to find an even smaller one if it's possible otherwise we found that we were not able to find p pairs where the maximum difference was less than or equal to this so now we want to loosen the restriction and say that left is actually going to be m plus one let's try maybe a bigger difference and see if we can find p pairs using that so that's the reasoning behind this. Now for our helper function, like I mentioned, it's basically going to be a linear scan. And so this is sort of the greedy part. This is why we sorted the array. We didn't sort the array for the binary search portion. So make sure that that's clear with you. We're not running binary search on the array. That's confusing and it's definitely unintuitive. So make sure you recognize that. So here we're going to use an I pointer and we're going to keep track of the count of pairs where the difference is below this threshold. So both of these are going to be initialized to zero and then we're going to start scanning. We're going to make sure our I pointer is less than the length of the array, but actually we're going to say less than the length of the array minus one because the way we're going to compare the values, we're always going to compare nums of I with nums of I plus one like this. So we can take the difference like that. 
nums of i minus nums of i plus one. And of course, we want the absolute difference of this part. If this is less than or equal to the threshold that was supplied to us, then we can say we found a new valid pair. So let's increment the count of our valid pairs. And then let's increment our i pointer by two because we used both of these values. We can't use them again. So we increment this by two. Whoops, I forgot about that or I, I wasn't reading my screen, I guess. But next, if that was not the case, perhaps the difference was actually greater than the threshold. In that case, we definitely don't increment the count and we take our I pointer and only increment it by one because we're going to skip this. But it's possible that this guy compared to its right neighbor might be valid. Now, lastly, we have to return true or false from this function. So what I'm going to do here is if we ever get to the point where the number of pairs is equal to P, we can immediately return true. We don't need to do anything else. But if that's not the case over here, we will return false. So this is the entire code. I'm just going to quickly get rid of this comment so all the code fits on the screen. But this is the entire code. Now let's run it to make sure that it works. Whoops. And there was one edge case that we actually missed. Maybe you're able to figure it out, but it's when P is equal to zero. I think that's kind of stupid. If we don't need to find any pairs at all, then I guess the return value is zero because the maximum difference is going to be zero. So I'm just going to handle that with an if statement at the beginning of our code. So basically, if P is equal to zero, return zero. So now let's run it again. And as you can see, it works and it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.